Yeah, that's great. Yes. Okay. Now, now, one of you guys said that, you know, it's a structure of system, right? Of computing system, right? So um, who else would like to add uh, and do that? It kind of like delves deeper into how like CPUs are designed. Or other platform. So what other platform than CPU is exist? GPU? GPU, what else? Uh, network on a chip. Hmm? System on a chip, yes. What else? FPGA. FPGA, what else? Uh, structure of memory. That's a inner subsystem, but yes, hmm. correct. What else? Microcontrollers. Microcontroller, what else? TPUs. The one is now built by uh, uh, Google and others, right, for the machine learning, which is way higher than GPU. There's DPU. So maybe I can tell you a story, okay? The story is the following. If you look into the computation, computation is almost like, you know, human brain, right? So we are having a bunch of sensors, right? Like, you know, we have the hearing system, we have the vision system, we have, you know, the nose for like smelling stuff, we have taste, right, by our mouse and so on, right? Those sensors are gathering information, right? And this, this information, it needs to be stored, it needs to be processed, it, then it needs to give and what executed and based on the execution you start moving arm you know you start doing the reaction you start kicking or you start smiling you start getting mad right that's something similar right so this specific course is looking in deep details of a specific system when i say system it's a computing system so if you look into the system, platform there is gpu as one of you guys already said there is CPU, as another guy said, and the CPU is a central processing unit. GPU is a graphical processing unit. And there is D DPU with a data processing unit. There is TPU, which is higher than GPU processing unit. And of course, one of you guys said FPGA. There is a big, huge branch of science taking every single one as it is and studying it. But since, you know, we are the above level of the undergraduate, we are senior level, right? So we are 4,000 level. That means, you know, pretty much majority of you will be graduating this semester, right? So you need to get the taste of what is computer architecture. So you're not gonna take every single thing in the computer architecture, but you know, you're gonna take the taste of the computer architecture. Okay, so taking the test, that means, you know, we're gonna pick up one system and one of the system is called a risk, a risk architecture. Reduced instruction set architecture. What is this specifically? It's designing a CPU using a specific uh, architecture and looking from the beginning of the architecture to performance evaluation. So how, as a computer architect, I look into this platform or that platform or that platform and I make evaluation and say, this is better in this specific application. This is better in that application. This is much better in that application. So chapter one in the book that we're gonna study, it will give us a deep details of how can we look into performance metrics and how we make performance evaluation. The whole entire course is a studying performance evaluation. But the second part of the computer architecture course we are taking this semester will be looking more in what in the software level of the system we are studying. So when I say risk architecture, it's not a certain processor, it's an architecture. So some of the some of the platform using this architecture and the specific microprocessor we're gonna look into it is called MIPS. So have you guys heard about a company called ARM, right? Yes. So ARM have their own processor, like a versions of processor looking to the risk architecture. One of them, it's an FPGA, it's called soft core processor. That means it's completely built up from lookup tables and flip flop for those study at 3300. And that's called microplays. And there is another one, it's called picoplays. 
there was another company called uh, Intel, which uh, have their FPGA division. It used to call Altera. And those guys work on something called NEOS. Then they use this risk architecture to build ARM processor like Cortex, Cortex uh, M1, M2, M0, M4, M5, and so Then outside the school, but you know, we can look into it. That's why you know I'm, I'm asking you guys to will have a project. There is another thing is called Risk Five, which is the upgraded version of the Risk, and it had been made by uh, a folks for undergraduate folks actually in the capstone uh, uh, senior uh, senior design project. Uh, they built something called Risk Five, which is an open source version of Risk, which is allowing you to add up. Uh, co-processors and accelerators into it without looking into uh, getting license for using the architectures as the risk, which is uh, uh, closed source. Anyway, so the second part, uh, part of this course is focusing more in the software level. And when I say software level is looking from the ground up to the system. So that means I look to the language, how can you program with language, you know, what type of instructions we have, and you know uh, which one is used for what and you know some examples about how can you programming using the language what language we have so normally i will look into a big big stack so when you look into the system there's something is called compiler we are not taking it but at least we know what's going on normally normally when you look into the computer you look in what bunch of one and zeros and those they called what machine languages. Those one and zeros are the best language to discuss to the machine. Speak that to the, to the machine one and zero. But as human, it's really hard for you to understand it. So they build up between of the machine a new bunch of steps. And these steps, you know, it's actually used what compiler to translate from your language you understand to the language that the machine will use. The, the closest language to the machine, then, you know, the machine, uh, the one and zeros is assembly, right? So chapter two or the part two of this course will be focusing on the assembly. Then chapter three will be moving into the, the brain of the processor itself, which is the computation element. How can you add? How can you subtract? How can you multiply? How can you divide? Is it based on the data format? Are you using the, the integer numbers or are you using fraction associated with integer number, which is the floating numbers, like you know, uh, real numbers? How can you do this based on the uh, representation that have been developed by IEEE, which is called what sync and precision and double precision? An example for that, of course, it can be used for machine learning or you know, AI or deep learning, or whatever you can uh, count. Then the fourth part will be how the parts inside the processor will be talking to each other based on executing instructions coming from the first, second part, which is the chapter two. And that will be the chapter four in that course. Then we're gonna end up looking into the performance evaluation of the memory hierarchy. So we're gonna look into the memory as one of you guys said, you know, we need to study memory and, you know, looking into the performance evaluation and how the memory can affect on the total performance of the system. So that's basically the story of this course. So the course will start performance evaluation, followed by the instructions and information about the software level of one of the risk architecture use cases, which is MAPS. The third will be also looking into the architecture of the arithmetic operations, followed by the how the parts will be communicating inside the processor and then you know followed by the memory architectures and evaluation of the memory. The whole entire course is based on evaluation, so we can get our grades, right? So it will be a couple of quizzes, which is two quizzes. But of course, you know, I will be giving you homework and I will give you one week to do your homework. Then you know the day that you will submit your homework is you know, the day that I will be posting the answers for the question. So let's say that, you know, I said Monday, you know, you submit your homework, right? Then, you know, the next Monday at night, I will be posting on Canvas the answers. Then, you know, you move forward so you can learn the thing. Pretty much the first part and the second part will be more 
homework practice, the rest of the book, which is basically the chapters three to five, you don't need because it's more fundamentals than you know, just like you know, practicing a solving problem. There is a certain project that you know you guys will be clustered uh, based on how many numbers of students I have in total. And from there that, you know, I will be giving topics per groups and you guys will be working together so you can make what evaluation for a certain system or a certain program or compiler or whatever, or algorithms. And you will be writing IEEE format uh, paper as a, as a team and you will submit the draft in a certain time. I reply back with the modification. If I see there is modification needed, you will submit the finals and that will be a part of your grade. Then we're gonna have the fight. Let me share with you. you know, everybody can see my screen, right? Sure, right? Yeah, we can yes. see the screen. Okay, so now you know, I'm not sure how you guys feel comfortable with Canva. I used to use Blackboard. Now we are going to Canva, so you know, hopefully it's really smooth for you guys to use it. So I'm actually going in here my CPP. I'm accessing my computer, and then you know, I'm sending the duo. Second, you know, sometimes it comes into my phone. Okay. Now we have the welcome canvas. Courses and here what. So if you notice, I already posted here what the, the syllabus, right? So you already have your syllabus and here the announcement. So the announcement, did you guys receive the announcement I sent? Yes. So I just hope we show that, you know, you are receiving it, okay? So here is the announcement for everybody from now on, you know, every week or every, every week I would be sending you a summary about what's going on in the announcement. And if there's some message I would like to communicate with you about, it will be through the announcement and another thing is called email. But anyway, let's read, let's go through the, the the syllabus, and from there, you know, we can move forward. And after that, maybe you can have an introduction about what we're gonna do for the next time. That makes sense. Okay. So, um, uh, this is the syllabus for the 2022. Uh, I'm gonna also leave a PDF under the modules. So here, under modules, you will find week one, week two, week three, week four, whatever, right? And the material as a PDFs or PowerPoints or you know recorded video, you will find that under the specific week belong to the material that you know we already shared. Okay. Now, this course, as I said, is providing the fundamental of the architecture of computer systems. And as you guys mentioned, we're gonna be talking about different type of architectures, uh, how the mood is working, processors in general is gonna be designed the automatic operations, and also about, you know, the memory architecture, whether it's going to be cache or main memory or virtual memory, and how this will affect in the performance evaluation of the whole entire system. Expected outcomes. So, you know, when somebody asks you for an interview and tell them that, tell you that, you know, what courses you already have taken in California Pomona belong to computer architecture. You'll tell them that, you know, I took a course, it's called 4300, and, you know, the outcome of this course for the following. One, develop a program of the risk architecture processor and looking into the key features of this architecture. Also looking in the different types of styles of architecture from the perspective of performance, whether they're gonna be single cycle implementation versus uh, pipelining implementation. Also looking into how the control units in a processor work. And you will be able to make analysis of both hardware and software and taking the right decision, which will actually filter into the performance evaluation and better performance. You will be able to describe and explain what is memory hierarchy, why there is importance for having a hierarchy in the memory instead of having a big table, and the impact on the system. And also you will be able to implement a version of the MIPS uh, microprocessor or that will be working with RISC-V uh, RISC architecture. 
this course is critical. So since you know we have accredited programs forever, because if you guys are looking for a job, right, you will like in the specification they say that you know your degree should be uh, accredited, right? So at least you know how you can answer these things for somebody into uh, what interviewing you. Then to be eligible for taking this course, you need to be able to understand our uh, microcontroller, right? Or 3300, which is basically the uh, how do description language is very long. Why? Because you might have a topic like you build a processor and you evaluate it. You, you, you take some code from internet for a processor, you run it on a board and you're evaluating it and so on. When we're gonna be meeting, pretty much we're gonna be meeting in building nine. Hopefully life will turn it back to normal in February 12th, then we can meet in the room 423. But you know, before this time, unfortunately we will be meeting on Zoom. I know that you guys tired of Zoom, but you know, it is something better than nothing until the situation will be better, right? Normally we'll be meeting one o'clock to 2.15. If I will come late a little bit due to some meetings or whatever, I will be sending announcement to you guys by enough time so you guys will not be like panicking or you know, time will be changing. It depends on my time. For convenience, so all of us can see the questions and concerns, I have something is called Slack. Have you guys heard about it? Yeah. So let me tell you a story about Slack. So I take this course as an event to give you a lot of information even outside the course scope. So I know that you guys are in favor of this course, right? But there is a, a kind of network similar to this core, which is in favor to be used by top companies like IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and you know, um, uh, and other companies that you know, top top notch company in the United States, which is called Slack. So Slack, I'm gonna share it with you here. It's called Slack. See, I have two things here. I have in my Slack two channels, not two channels, two groups of channels. One is for quantum computing with my collaborator from Intel and IBM, and one for you guys, I call it Rico IoT, a reconfigurable internet of things. That's a part also of future computer architecture, by the way. Anyway, so I'm gonna use it, you can have app, or you can use it on the browser, right? So I use it on the browser. It will open here in front of you. Everybody can see my screen, right? Yes. See all of the channels I have? So I have a channel for 4820 senior project. I have whatever for 2300 summer, whatever, whatever. I have for the NASA teams. I have for the whatever. So for our, for our uh, practice, there is a channel for the 4300 4, spring 2022. So I already sent to you guys um, an invitation. And I believe that you can see it by uh, checking your email uh, belong to Capoli. And you just need to accept it. If you already have your own, that's fine. Then, you know, I asked it to do what? To create a GitHub ID username and post it in where, post it on the general Slack channel. Some of you send it to me individually. I would actually appreciate if you can post it here so it will be easy for me to collect it after you guys finish posting. Is it okay for everybody? Yep. So anyway, here, any questions, like in Harry, and there is no way for you to get into the, like, you know, uh, office hours, stuff like that, you know? Some quick question that you know you would like everybody else also to learn out of it. You can post it here, and I check it from time to time, and I go and reply back um, as soon as possible. Okay. 
that's beside the feature of the office hours. So I'm trying to make it easy for you guys, okay? Anyway, back, we have for this, uh, for this course, it's basically here posted on the thing and you already have guys already have it. And there is a password associated with the link. Uh, my name, I'm, I'm Professor Muhammad El Hadidi. Uh, I mean, here in US, they call me Professor Ali, but you know, I'm Professor Muhammad El Hadidi. I'm uh, working for Cal Poly as assistant professor. And I'm also a scientist for University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and uh, University of uh, Louisiana Lafayette. And I work also with a couple of uh, US Air Force and Navy and uh, NASA, okay? And here is my, uh, my office number. Here is my uh, official email address, mainly if you guys remember for those people attended 2300 with me, mainly for United States machine. So that's easy for you to remember, mainly at cpp.edu. For you to uh, go into the office hours, right? So my office hours is basically from 5.30 to 7.30 Monday, Wednesday, okay? To get into it, you need to go in Calendly here and I dedicated for every single uh, member who would like to meet me in the office hour, 15 minutes. So when you book your office hour slot here, that will give you a 15 minutes window to have your questions and answers through the Zoom. And once we've turned it back to normal life, you know, we'll see how we're gonna arrange it based on the university policy, okay? The book that we're gonna be using it's basically have been uh, developed by both professor from UC Berkeley and UCLA, uh, Professor Patterson uh, uh, and Professor uh, David uh, 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 Patterson and Hennessy. John Hennessy, I believe, and you know, uh, David Patterson. These two guys are the top, top, top scientists in computer architecture level in, in the nation and even international. He got like, you know, one of the most uh, uh, prestigious award last year, which is similar to Nobel Prize for the basic science. And the book is called Computer Organization and Design, so How Do We Software Interfaces? And this is the fifth edition we are looking into, okay? If you would like to buy it, you can buy it. If you would like to uh, have a PDF from internet, <laughs> it's not, you will find it for free in internet. You know what I mean? Um, if you would like to uh, actually uh, relay on my slides, better for you to relay on my slides and information because I try to put every single information that you need for the exam. For those, the project will need FPGA, okay? So there is a possible FPGA board you can use, which is the Nexus A7 or Nexus uh, 4 DDR, and you have the link. And I assume that all of you have it since you already took the CIPS 300, right? If you like to learn, this is an option. We, if you like to learn. We, yes. we actually have the newer board that came from the Nexus 4. A7, That's the right? one that we're required now. Yeah. A7. That's fine. So I'm just trying to make it easy, you know? So if it's A7, perfect. If uh, DDR4 is perfect. <laughs> Version before that is perfect. Because by the way, end of the day, that you know, different between board to board is the XDC file, if you remember, right? Which is the IO interface. Anyway, back to the point. So there are different type of boards, which is actually using different type of flow mechanism than Vivado, which is uh, belong and sponsored and supported by Intel Altera, which is the DE1 SOC D10 Nano. If you like to learn, if you like to learn an extra tools while you are in computer architecture, you can use those. I have some in my office. I can actually share it with you guys to do your own study. And that will be like extra privilege. Like, you know, you're adding extra credit in your pocket when you are looking for jobs. That's it's up to you, okay? One of the activities actually I like, and I can share with you, there is a contest uh, uh, sponsored by Intel and uh, uh, a company is called TerASIC. Have you heard about TerASIC? Hello? 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 
Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. You have your microphone off. Yeah, I think it's not me. It's, I think the internet. You guys, I don't know how many how many you've heard about there was a, like a bad, bad wind uh, happened and then you know there were like you know trees everywhere and all these things. I don't know. Have you heard about the story? Not yet. I lived through that story. I was crashing. Yeah, 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 I went through it. <laughs> I went through it too. You know, my, my at home, you know, there is no internet. <laughs> That's why I'm working from the office. You know, I went to a restaurant on Friday, and as I was pulling in, the all the entire uh, power for the entire block went out. It's crazy. That, that's crazy. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you something. I'm doing with uh, with some students, you know, which also you guys can do with uh, Altera, right? So there is innovative FPGA contest, and this FPGA contest is like sponsored. It, they paid money by Intel and a company is called Ter Asic, and you know this is the innovative FPGA uh, contest, and you know Calpoli uh, Pomona team. Uh, by you know supervised by me they are now in the semi-finals and they're working with what uh building a reconfigurable crypto processor for iot application here you can see it, semi-finals and here's some other crazy ideas it can be done and also can fit into the computer architecture so why i'm saying this because you know i don't recommend uh you guys we are in 2022 just studying the course and have the grade and leave, right? It's better for you to, when you have time, of course, because I know that you, most of you guys taken like a lot of units, right? So if you can organize yourself, you can also work on some other stuff like that, that would be really good for your CV, especially our graduating school, right? Anyway, now we're gonna talk about the grading, right? So grading, based on the grading, it's accumulated. It's like you know, based on what activities we are doing through the uh, during the uh, course uh, workload, right? So quiz number one is taking five percent of the whole entire course, and the exam or the quiz will be on March second, and that's actually on what week number six. Midterm number one is taking twenty percent of the total of the uh, course. Great. And that will be on March 14th, week eight. Quiz two, that will be 5% on April 4th in week 11. Midterm number two is taking 20% April 18th, week 13. Projects, it's basically 10%. And you guys will be required to submit your package and everything by May 3rd. And then, you know, that will be looking into the whole entire package as a report and so on. And we, I will send more information about this once we form groups. And final exam is a 40% of the whole entire course workload. And that will be based on the university schedule. Sounds good? The note I made here about schedule subject to change without notice, because we don't know what will happen with the COVID-19, you know? Nobody trusts it. So I don't know what will happen. Are we going to send it back to normal by February 12th? Or, you know, the state will be extending the, the Zoom activities? I don't know. So that's something we don't know. Okay? Then how the exams will be actually having, if we send it back to normal, exam would be like, you know, the, the time of the one hour, 15 minutes, or whatever. And, you know, will have enough questions covering one, one hour, 15 minutes. But if we're gonna be online, so the exam will be based on the grid scope as I used to do uh, during the pandemic. And you will have from eight o'clock in the morning to midnight 
to solve the exam, so make it easy for you. It depends there is no internet, whatever happens, right? Grading scale. So to get A, you need to be between 94% to 100%. Unfortunately, you know, uh, if you are less than 61%, that would be considered F. Okay. And topics that it need to be, uh, it would be covered by this course, introductionary, and we already started introductionary. And then, you know, evaluation and evaluation of the computer architecture, that's chapter one, and the performance metrics and cost versus performance. That will be the first chapter in the book of Hennessy and Patterson. Then the second will be the programmability of the risk style processor, and that will be taken MIPS as a use case. In instructions and architecture will be discussed. Addressing mood will be discussed. MIPS and instructions will be discussed. Using MIPS as assembly language will be discussed. And I know that you already guys have the flavor and the test of the uh, working with assembly while you were studying 6301, right? Which is uh, microcontroller. But this is a little bit different. Then chapter two still will be covering the data pass and the control design. So design the data pass looking into the different type of strategies for implementation from single cycle to multi-cycle to the pipelining, as I said here in the number uh, three. Also, while we're saying pipelining, that means we are making flexible design that it has to be look and focus with uh, tracking every single packet sent in the processor. Otherwise, we will cause something that's called hazards. That means the process will be processing trash. How can we overcome this problem and we try to have a better performance and avoiding hazards? Then memory architectures, looking into the cache coherency, cache memory close to the processor, moving into the memory, uh, main memory to the virtual memory, to stick memory and whatever we know memory we can imagine and how it works. If we have time, you can look about how can we build it in Revlog, but you know, normally, you know, that's not really hard because you know, once you understand this with your skills, you have from surface you you can start building blocks and communicating them together by instantiations and uh, inheriting with parameter. Uh, some policies, you know, it's not really, uh, hopefully, it's not really harsh for policies, but you know, uh, there is no room for negotiation on the grade unless there is some mistake and need to be fixed. And we, I'm a human and you guys are humans. So of course there is a room that I will make mistake and you guys can correct me. But if there is no room, so unfortunately, you know, there is no way for me to enhance grade or whatever, it depends on the situation. Also, uh, uh, I would recommend everybody to be honest with himself because once you will be actually grading, you're going to be working by yourself. Unless, you know, the luck came and you and your friend work together in the same company. But also be careful because, you know, if you manage to figure out that, you know, both of you are doing the same thing, that would be a big problem. And we call the cheating. So be honest with yourself. And I promise you, this course is really easy. And majority of people getting A and B and stuff like that. So, you know, no words. Okay. Um, if you if you need a recommendations like you know DRC is open and they send me information confidential and you know I can even take care of it uh, individually and there is no harm in that. If you have like an urgent situation or emergency that is not allowing you to attend the course uh, exams or midterms or quizzes, I would recommend you if you can bring me like a piece of paper saying that something is wrong, so I can you know take care of that or figure out a way to help you within the course books. So far, do you guys have any questions? No questions so far, I don't think. Now I'm gonna give you uh, uh, a task to do, okay? Semester-based, uh, other semesters, I used to build the teams who are gonna work together in a group, right? And uh, some people didn't like that. You know, some people feel comfortable with other uh, members, some people feel other comfortable with those. 
So if I if I do this job by myself, maybe some people will not like that. Okay. So what I would like actually you guys to do for me, one of you will do what bring a Google document sheet, okay, and invite me to be a part of it. And then sort of groups like group A, B, C, D, E, whatever, right? So I think how many groups we have, we can form, I can tell you now based on the number of the students. So, give me a second. Because the internet now is being seven. You know? So <clears throat> Okay, so I would like you to have 12 groups. Each group will have three members. Sounds good? Can you hear me? Yes, sounds good. So, you know, the one who will make the Google documents, he will make what? Group A, group B, group C, 12, right? Then everybody choose which group he can go with. But, you know, be sure that, you know, the group maximum will take three. Okay. Once you guys give me the groups in the Google document, and I will give you one week. Is it good? Think about it. And then you give me this on the coming Monday, right? I'll take it from you with the GitHub ID, and I will build GitHub groups, and I will send to every single group as three topics. You choose one of the topics to what to do your research with it. Okay, and most likely going to be computer architecture running program to evaluation stuff like that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so everybody heard me. If any objection or any concern, please let me know now. You said three people per group. Three, yeah, three members per group. I don't want to make it like a soggy and four, five, six in the group. Because I would like to see that three of you guys working. Got it. Because I used to be a student, and I know, I mean, I, I have said that too. Some of the group will find one or two people are working, and the rest are like, you know, less interest maybe for other reasons. So then, you know, some people will feel not fair, some people will feel fair, and, you know, that can cause like, in, like you know, mixed feelings, right? So it's better for you to be yeah, like yeah. honest with yourself. Yeah. Makes sense. Got it. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Super. So you have to know that you know I am proud that you you guys are doing your best. You do this really hard time, and I I will do my best to help. And don't forget, you know, my office, my office hours, you know, my phone, you know, Slack, are open for you guys to have any questions or anything, and I will do my best to help. Sounds good to everybody. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Okay. Now I will try to share my screen on my tablet with the first step uh, for a little bit introductionary about you know what we're gonna do exactly with chapter one, and then I will let you go. And I might start the lecture on Wednesday a little bit late, but I will give you the exact time by announcement, so you will be aware. Okay. But it's not like every Monday or uh, Wednesday. It's just like you know this specific because I have a I have a big meeting with MIT. Okay, so Derek, Derek, I should you know I appreciate you. You know you did a good job. So you know he really created the Google document for you guys. Okay. So what you can do, you can write your name and you know. Between burn seats, you put your user uh, GitHub ID, uh, username. Sounds good. Okay. Put in front of you the username. Uh, I mean, the username of the GitHub. ID. Oh, good, good. I see everybody's working good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I really appreciate, you know, the collaboration we are doing now. Okay, now let me start sharing my um, slides so we can go through the work. Oh, by the way, have you guys seen what's going on with the semiconductor uh, branch? Have you seen Raspberry Pi now? How much is the cost? Are you guys following the news? I'm looking for Raspberry Pi. Three. You're talking four. about the new stackable Raspberry Pi, right? It's ridiculous. You know, did you see the prices? I didn't look at the prices. I figured it would be similar to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, yesterday I was looking for like nodes, right? Competing nodes for Raspberry Pi, right? Two hundred dollars mm -hmm. used to be fifty dollars. Oh my gosh! Exactly. Some people even selling the Raspberry Pi Three for one hundred fifty bucks. Oh yeah, there was a huge supply chain shortage with the chips, but like it's been ridiculous. A lot of people are scalping them. Right? It's in, yeah, oh my gosh, amazing, right? I remember buying up a whole bunch from on sale from uh, Micro Center just before they got crazy, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, I should actually. <laughs> I have I have the uh, pickle, the small one. And I have also the, what's the other one? The, uh, what is the other one? The, the new one, the, the, two, the, the Z2W. This one, it used to be like um, 15 bucks, right? Now it's like 120. It's really like crazy. I'm just downloading now the, the slide so I can share it. One second. Okay. Is my room. There is no up here, okay? Everybody can see my screen, right? Yeah, are these slides gonna be on uh, Canvas? Yes. So do you remember when I said, you know, under the under the, the module, right? There will be like a folder called syllabus. Again, even that I posted the tools, right? But I will put as a PDF. Then there will be another folder is called what? A week one. And in week one, you will have like a subfolder, like, you know, a recorded uh, a lecture, you know, uh, a copy from the PDFs, you know, whatever, right? Okay, sounds good. Thanks. That will make it easy for you guys. Anyway, so most likely, this slide. Talking about you know the computer architecture from the big big perspective, it's like you know you have a big drone, and this drone on the top of the computer architecture field and branches, and is looking to every single one in detail, right? So we need to know that we are engineers, right? And since we are engineers, we are something between mathematician and physics, right? We are not actually studying physics, 
we are not really studying 100% math. You guys agree? We are like, you know, taking from here and there and building fraud, pretty much. So, and when we talk about computer architecture, we need to thank who the, the people who build what semiconductor. Because from there, we build what? And from there, we cluster this transistor to build what? Logic gate. And from there, we need to thank the people who work on architecture. The cluster of this logic gate to build what? Memory. They build what? A processor. And also, we need to thank the people who work on what driver they call, they call them what firmware. So, firmware, so you know, firmware, you know, uh, interfacing, interfacing software and hardware together. And then, you know, the people who start building what compilers, and then the people who build language. And then the people who build what operating system. So, you know, they kind of start like, you know, instead of me running one application, no, I can run application and watch a video and, you know, paying my bank transactions, you know, uh, uh, invoices and I can check news and so on. So they build what operating system. And then we need to find the people who start building what application. So this whole entire thing is what computer. Are you required to know all of these guys in detail? No, you're gonna be expert in one of those. But then you know you are aware of what's happening with them. That makes sense. Sure. So if you look to the computer, do you, you know, do you call this? Do you call this what? Do you call it stack? When you hear the word stack, that means you know multiple things in the top of each other, right? So I can tell you a hardware stack as I'm a hardware engineer. The other guy would tell you I'm a software engineer. I work on software stack, right? Then you know somebody else, you know, from the application will tell you, you know, oh, we are using the system. That means you combine the software and hardware together. Then somebody else will tell you, oh, you know, I'm looking to the operating system stack because there is a steps inside the operating system uh, you need to be uh, take care of, right? So if I look to computer design, that means I look to instruction design. And if I look to the instruction design, as I did here, I will look to the bunch of one and zeros and the switches. And if I look into the bunch of one and zeros in the switches, I fit in the compiler. And if I look into the compiler, I will look into the computer. Right? If I look in a hardware, I will look to a combination of circuit versus sequential circuit. The logic gate using contenting both. You know uh, how I'm gonna build the oscillator to have the clock. How I'm gonna build uh, the uh, which number? How many transistors I will be using to build the gate, right? So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of something that's called VLSI. Have you guys heard about VLSI? It's a topic. Yeah. Sure. So. I think there is a course for real in the, in the uh, engineer colloquium here in Cal Poly Pomona. I think, you know, Professor Olson, Dorita Olson teaches So, uh, and I don't know if Sue, Sue can teach the course on I think I think Sue is more into RF. I don't know. Yes, but anyway, you know, how many of you are aware of that, you know, and that or and not gate are transistor driven? Have you guys heard about that? I will tell you a story. There is something it's called transistor, right? And this transistor is in time. What is in time? Normally in the transistor, there's three terminals, right? There is gate, there is the drain, and there is a source. It's like the water canal. Right? So, you know, I'm pushing water from this side to that side, and there is a gate in the middle allowing me how much of what particles will be moving from here to there. Right? 
So and this is the thing. So if the charge moving between the drain and source controlled by the gate is moving electron, this is called n pi. But based on the definition of the current, mathematicians and even physicists can and say that you know why you have to say electrons moving from point to point. Maybe holes moving from point to point. What holes? Holes is the representation of the positive charge. Holes is the positive uh, the, uh, representation. Okay. So there is another transistor. He make like you know like a circle like this the, the negative or the inverse of the n pi, and then they call it p pi. Here is the drain, here is the source, and here is the gate. So instead of one pushing to the other, the other would be pushing to the other. At the end of the day, you know, how the current happen. You know, here is my electron, here is the hole, this is going to go here. So the movement is actually causing the current, right? So this is the type of transistor, this is the type of the other transistor. Do you guys agree? Now, let me add one extra page here. Now, when I said there is n type and t type, so end of the day, I have here my n, and I have here I, the, the p, and those are the representation of two transistors. But then they build something combining them together. They call it what? CMOS. Complementary metal oxide silicon. So this one is N mass. This one is P. Combining them together. Here's VCC, ground, and here's the common thing. And here is the output. And everybody has its own source and drain, right? So we have here the drain. Right? So such a kind of this is called what? CMOS. And luckily, this circuit symbol in front of you, if it has a this, right? If it has high, it's going to go here low. And if it has low, it's going to be high. So pretty much this is what inverter. And this is actually what our knock gate. Sounds good? Using this, it can help you to build NAND and NOR. Because I'm not sure if you guys heard about it, there is no thing called AND and OR in a real semiconductor. Did you know that? Have you heard about when they say, oh, your flash drive is NAND gate, it's a NAND technology? Have you guys heard this before? Yes. So, NAND. So pe people are laying more into NAND and because it's fast. Nor it has its own job. That's why I just need to refresh your knowledge for those people attended with me before courses. You know, NAND and NOR, we learned something is called how to move from gate to the other equivalent. You guys remember? And we've been building this many times. So, so if you would like to build a NAND gate, so normally NAND gate is like this. So the regulation says, if you are series in the bottom, you will be parallel in the top. So here is what. And then you know those together will be A, and this together will be B, and that's going to be what? No. This circuit configuration in front of you is describing N. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, no more. No. No, no. 
Okay. Now, the reverse engineering of them is what norm. It's like that. Then if you would like to build OR for this, you will take that output, right? And you connect it to this circuit, and this thing, it will be OR, and so on. So imagine that, you know, 2300, you learn, right? End up being on the chip, bunch of these symbols, right? So the people who work in a computer architecture, people who work in a computer architecture, they appreciate the semiconductor search. Why? Because if you guys remember, we used to have a listed of transistors, something is called Q. How many of you heard about that? Yeah, so Q, there used to be something doing like the transistor, and the TVs at that time, you remember, it used to be like huge like this. And you will find them in the music now. So then they came into the era of, you know, we have a piece of semiconductor. And in this piece of semiconductor, we located just many of them. Then they start building the gates and processors. Well. Then they start increasing the number of transistors. That means they shrink the size of the transistor in the chip. Then, you know, it started building another era. Like I, uh, I, uh, you know, you have VLSI, you have ULSI, you have LSI, you have SI, like semiconductor integration, small number. Then you start increasing number of transistors on the chip, large. Then you know, it starts increasing more and more, very large. Then you start increasing more and more, ultra large scale integration. <laughs> I mean, and they call this, you know, I, your processor. Uh, five nanometer technology or 160 micrometer or whatever. So if you look into the data sheet of your processor i7 or i9 or i11 or i3 or i1 or you know Pentium 3 or Pentium 2 or Pentium 1 or you know the 6086 or 6060 or whatever whatever. Those were built from different type of what transistor size. So the length of the channel between the source and drain, because you know, end of the day, the transistor looks like this. Here's the metal oxide, here's the gate, and here's the N, the D, and here's the source, and here's something that's called sub substrate. And you know, connect substrate with the bus. Anyway, so back to the point. Uh, you look to the processor, you look to the technology. How many of you heard about this technology stuff? How many of you heard? You didn't hear about it? So there is, you know, I want you guys to learn a habit. And instead of looking for the new games like, you know, Dota or whatever, you look into, you know, what is the new technology used for the uh, Apple, for instance. Have you guys looked into the Mac? How many of you are in favor of Mac? No one really like Mac, right? How, did you hear that, you know, uh, Apple already designed their own processor based on ARM? Their new processor is incredible. It's M1. Like the M1 is the most advanced chip that I can even think of in a personal computer. Exactly. So they fit every single thing in the chip. You know why? Because they shrink this master transistor to be like two nanometer technology or seven nanometer technology. And we're going to learn something is called Moore's Law. Moore's What is this Moore's law? That guy in the 60s came and say every single year, every single year, number of transistors in the ship will be doubled. Every single year, the, the new ship will be number of transistors will be doubled. There is a bunch of the research came in the last couple of years said that you know we are in the end of the Moore's law era. Why? Because they keep shrinking the transistor into the point that we cannot shrink anymore. We cannot shrink one anymore. You know why? Why? Because, you know, every time you shrink, right? Here, right? 
number of electrons going here in this channel getting less. They came into the point, imagine, to have something is called single electron one little itty bitty electron going in the channel back and forth and that gate, you know, stopping it. If we shrink more, that electron will go, will go. Right? But even at like three nanometers, if you're not careful, you can have electrons phasing through it. Exactly. Based on the, what, the uncertainty, what? Uh, the uncertainty principle in quantum tunneling. Exactly. So that's why there is research. We're not going to go in the computer section. I'm just taking the computer section from the bottom to the top view. Okay? So, you know, there is a ton of error. There is a ton of research about how can we use different material than semiconductor. There's another one that's called silicon carbide. They're using the carbon atom instead of semiconductor. And you know the semiconductor is basically the sand. You know the sand in the on beach, right? What you know? This doing the semiconductor. There is quantum, right? So in the quantum, it's no longer about the movement, it's about the spin. So that electron or particle optics, uh, photons or whatever, it's spin, right? The spin of it, it builds a spherical coordinates, right? So you know you can go like this and that will be a state. And you go like this, and that will be state. Go like this, it's gonna be state. Here's zero and here's one. Zero one, zero one. So imagine this is a processor. This is a processor. This is a processor. Because zero one, zero one, zero one. So they built something that's called what? Qubit. And number of qubit can open the door of having infinity of application one and in the normal system. By the way, no one human, no one phenomena on the universe analog. You guys agree? But you know, the scientists to accelerate it to tail it to the uh, semiconductor, they, they make what analog to digital conversion and it's a process, right? Imagine now that quantum computer can work without even digitalizing anything, right? I, 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 I'm sorry, Professor, but the last couple of sentences you said were really, really hard to understand. I will tell you. So, example, for instance, you know, now let's say that the sound we are, you know, I'm talking now, right? Is it coming to you and hearing it? Z11? No. It's basically waves. So, normally, for us to use the processor, right? We have to convert this to what sample, and then we start making quantization. Then that will be zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Then I start off. Then you will go back to convert it from digital back to analog, so you can hear, right? Right. Now, this is actually causing us to lose information. Because you know, moving from analog to digital, back digital to analog, that's causing us to lose information in the middle. So the accuracy and performance will be down. Right? But analog, but analog, if you make analog process directly, you find a way to process analog. That's way better, right? That will open the doors for us to understand a lot of phenomena in the universe. Like that's why quantum will be the future. US Air Force is starting something. Do you remember you have a bachelor in computer engineering, right? Now they start something bachelor in quantum engineering. OK? There is a bunch of stuff we can discuss about the quantum, but you know that can be for another time when we have time. There's like a superposition entanglement. You know what is entanglement? Entanglement is crazy. One of the problems we have in computer architecture, something is called bending. Have you heard about it? Bandwidth. What is bandwidth? I'm here memory. I'm here processor. And I'm trying to take as much as I can from this memory to the processor to process the data, right? This is like about time. It has a limitation how much I can take per second, right? That's why one of the 
limitation of any system you can have. But in the quantum, they have something that's called entanglement. Entanglement, if this particle and this particle, this is in the beginning of the universe, and this is in the end of the universe, that means we cannot even catch. It's like infinity space, right? If they are in entanglement, if this guy moving here, that guy immediately will move there in something called T0. So in that case, they, are, they have infinity bandwidth, right? They don't need to move something here in the middle to do the synchronization. So this is something we can discuss maybe next time. But anyway, now you understand what I'm talking about. This is a stack. And I, today I talked to you about, you know, the list of rights. We talked about the policy, what this course would be covering, the, how we're going to even communicate on the Slack and, you know, office hours. And then, you know, we start talking about, you know, the processors from the way level that, you know, transistors, a semiconductor transistor, transistor going to get, get going to the processor, processor going to interfaces, interface going to the compiler, compiler language and communication, and this. That makes sense? We're going to continue on Wednesday, the rest of the slides, and uh, we will move forward with chapter one. Any questions? Hello. Uh, no questions, I don't think. No questions right this second, Professor. So you guys are doing great, and, and I'm proud of all of you. And it was my pleasure to talk to you today. And yeah, sure. You can you can wait for the end of the course and we can talk. Uh, anyway, so it was my pleasure to talk to all of you guys. God bless you and happy and you. Thank you. Thanks, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. Have a good one, Professor. Professor, yes, sir. for the uh, STP team, are we still meeting on Wednesdays at 2.30? Which one? STP one? For the senior project? Yeah, for the senior project for the drones. We're going to meet on Thursday, right? It's Thursday now at 2.30? Is that going to be our... Uh, can you check with, uh, uh, with uh, Gerard? Yeah, I'll check with Gerard. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Professor? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We'll...